Great. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Professor Michael Bray. I'm Program Director of Acting for Global Screen at the Academy of Film. And if we could go over to the PowerPoint display, I'll take you through a few salient points of the course before introducing the films, which will explain what we, what we do. Um, the Academy of Film strives to broaden students' academic vision and equip them through uh, professional knowledge in creating content for screen through quality teaching and research and knowledge exchange. Uh, and we're very proud at the Academy of Film to have introduced a brand new course, which is Acting for Global Screen, uh, which is going to put acting at the very heart of a film school. This is very close to my heart. Um, as a screen acting teacher and film director and former producer, because for years I've been saying that we need acting at the very, very center of um, film schools, because too easily filmmakers become disconnected from the incredibly tricky art of acting for, for the screen. And that's why this course, this program has been created. So acting for global screen, if I can just click to the next, thing. Um, it's a BFA, which is a four-year undergraduate course. We aim to be the most competitive in the world in terms of cross-cultural and global enrichments. We want to touch upon everything needed for the actor. Um, acting for screen, stage acting, and acting with media technology. Because obviously the, the scope of what an actor has to do has changed so dramatically in the last 10 years, actors have to be prepared, trained in all of the methodologies to be able to do that. Um, this is a truly international program and was always intended to be so. We want eight local students and eight international students. We have a very small, luxurious cohort of 16 students. Um, which hopefully will mean that you are the very best of the best. Um, just a brief bit about me. Um, I was an actor. I was trained as an actor at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art many, many moons ago. I was actually a child actor who sort of stumbled in it, but I always wanted to be a film director. But I worked at every level within uh, theatre, film and television, including six years at the National Theatre of Great Britain, where I also directed and assisted Peter Hall and Peter Gill and wrote my first two stage plays, uh, The Rhythm of Love and The Back of the Bus Girls. Uh, the Rhythm of Love was then taken to television, where I directed it for television, and that began my television directing career. And I directed on television at the BBC Channel 4 for many years before forming my first film company, um, Winchester Films, uh, where I wrote and directed my first major film called The Sea Change, starring Ray Winston. Uh, that was chosen for Sundance and for Cannes, and then I signed a three-picture deal with 20th Century Fox, and then I carried on uh, directing and producing and writing films. And then, about 15 years ago, I was invited by Arts Educational Schools London to look at their provision for screen acting. And I found that it was hopeless. So I created the first BA in acting for film and television in Britain and an MA in screenwriting and also another one in film uh, making. Uh, all our films were screened at BAFTA. And I think we recreated how screen acting was seen, um, not only in Britain, but also in America. And it was because of that that I so wanted to run this program in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a truly international hub, not only that, but to put an acting program at the center of a film school is what I've always wanted to do. So here are some of our current students talking about the program as is. Acting for Global Screen is a new and exciting program at the Academy of Film at Hong Kong Baptist University. 
We specialize in enabling students to be able to act for film and television and the stage because acting has the same root. That is living truthfully in imagined circumstances. And if you're chosen for this program, we'll also give you the essential confidence you need to make bold and bright choices on a film set, in a rehearsal room, or on the stage. Action. And if you join this program, we'll teach you how to bring the character to emotional life on a film set. You will learn how to direct film, and direct for the stage. This is important because it's crucial for the actor to understand how important the relationship is between actor and director. You will study speech and voice. Movement for actors. and the fundamentals of acting. Here are our current students talking about the course. I love it. I just really like it. I enjoy going to school, which is a feeling that I never had before. We turned from people that we don't know and turned into like a, of like a family. It's a safe place to experiment. So many of my classmates, my teachers, are uh, helping me a lot in explore more of our personality. So fun to pretend all the films set together and work together. Someone's gonna be the clap boy. Someone's gonna do with the lighting. What can you do better instead of what you do wrong? So you have like the courage to keep like challenging yourself and do better amazing knowledge from inside the industry that I have never heard before. Because I always love acting, so why not do it as a subject, I was thinking, but then, you know, thankfully, I got in. I want to act or make movies. I'm really interested in this industry. Like, I'm feeling so much proud to study in this Acting for Global Screen course here. The course is encouraging me to really go for it and to try new things and become more of a bolder actor which is amazing. As an actor, you have to develop enormous confidence. That confidence will radiate out no matter what you do, whether you become a film director or a, a director of photography or a screenwriter or a producer. There are quite literally hundreds of jobs that the transferable skills from this program could take you to. If you have a dream of working in film, try out for this program. Hi, welcome back. Um, so that was a kind of vox pop of um, our current students and what they think of the course. And as you can see, it aims to be a fun course. Sorry about this. I think we've got another um, something playing in the in the line. Um, we aim for the course to be as fun and as exciting and as dynamic. As, an, as a career in the industry can possibly be. Obviously you have to be very focused and disciplined, but at the core, at the very base of acting, you need to enjoy it. And to do that, you need to discover how to enter the world of your imagined character. So it's about freeing you up. And that's what we've been doing with our actors in our first semester, our first cohort. And who knows, you could become cohort two, which would be brilliant. Um, I've been doing this for a while now, and I think it's extremely important to bring outside actors, directors and professionals in to work with student actors so that the student actors are reassured that they are getting exactly what they need to thrive and survive within the industry. So here are some of my former students and actors that I have brought in to work with them talking about my work. Some of these have obviously gone on to become famous. Uh, Finn Jones, who I see currently on the screen, is doing Iron Fist with Netflix. And there are many more, of course. Um, let's play the, the video. Michael Bray was my first introduction 
into the world of television and film. Really, I couldn't have asked for a better teacher. The knowledge and experience he passed down to his students really set us up to go into the professional world with both confidence, experience and knowledge. Um, I first worked with Michael on a short film and um, I remember being astonished really at how well prepared his actors were. They were open to direction, alive in the moment, spontaneous and exciting and technically knowledgeable and it was great to be a part of. He was an amazing director, his vision um, and also when he knew it was your moment to, to really push out performance, he'd come up to you and he'd whisper something in your ear and you knew, right, now it's time to really, really switch it on. He's definitely one of those teachers that stays in here because he taught through experience. You could tell that he's been there. He knows exactly what we need to do. I wish I had had that kind of opportunity as a student or as a young actor because it took me years to understand what was going on on a film set. Well, now I know and I learned it slowly. But for these students, for anybody who gets a chance to do a course like this, it's a wonderful opportunity to learn, to learn by doing. He created a really safe environment, an environment where you felt you had the ability to play. So that when I graduated and I got my first TV job, I walked on set and I felt like I belonged there. So for that, I'm really grateful. There was no difference between being on set uh, on this film and being on a professional set. So if you've got Michael coming to help you, you're very lucky. He will teach you how to make bold choices. And how to be really believable uh, when you work with a camera. Michael has worked with the very best. But what makes him such an exceptional teacher is that he can see exactly what you need as an actor for you to your niche your full potential and for you to become the best actor you can be. Michael Bray really did give me the key to the doors of my future. You are about to embark on creating fantastic and exciting work with a truly inspirational and world-class director. So if you want a career on stage, film and television, apply for this course. I look forward to seeing you at the auditions. Hi, um, so that was some of my former students and the professional actors I brought in to work with them. Something that I want to continue to do here at the Academy of Film with Acting for Global Screen. So we're in for exciting times ahead. Just a little bit more about the course now as we go on with this presentation. Um, let's go back. We have lots of external supports. The Academy of Film is one of the best film schools in the world and as such has produced some astonishing alumni over the years many of whom come back to help with the students obviously not just for acting for global screen but the many other film courses within it because one of the things i want to emphasize is albeit that you'll be learning and being educated as actors you will also have to understand about film directing and producing and writing and being within a film school will nurture and enrich all of those talents as you move forward. So these are just some of the alumni uh, that you will be exposed to uh, in your time at the Academy of Film and on Acting for Global Screen. Acting for Global Screen is broken down into four years. In the first two years, we concentrate on the basic skills, the um, the methodologies and the mindset and developing your imagination. But then as you move on into years three and four, obviously the, the, the work begins to change. And in year three, we have fantastic acting internships, which we are, obviously it's, it's COVID restricted at the moment, but we're hoping that by 2023 and beyond, it will return to normal. And what we want to do is place you in film companies, theater companies, television companies, entertainment-based organizations, whether that be online or the, the more traditional sort, whatever it is, these will be incredibly valuable experiences for you as young people to develop your skill knowledge and your understanding of the industry into which you're going to go at every level. Because I think it's very important to know that whatever you do moving forward, you're going to have to have transferable skills. 
you're going to have to be very flexible as young people to earn a living, whatever you do. So having a knowledge of an industry and reflecting back onto the methodologies that you learn whilst at university is very important. And I think that that's what Acting for Global Screen will give you, is an extraordinary engine to develop you as individuals. Um, we also will have exchange programs and summer institute workshops. These are just some of the people that we're talking to and we're in constant conversation with them. It's the uh, Carnegie Mellon University, uh, Yale University, their School of Drama, Emerson College, the Actors Studio in New York City, where I've worked and I've directed, uh, the National School of Drama in Delhi in India, Acting for Screen Department at the University of the Arts London, where I formerly worked, uh, the National Institute of Dramatic Art, NIDA in Australia, and the Central Academy of Drama in Beijing, China. And recently I've been speaking to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in London, and Guildhall School of Music and Drama in London, but one where I, I trained as an actor and another one where I've worked as their head of film and television. So I'm building connections with those for workshops and summer institutes so that you as students of this program will have that fantastic opportunity to work with the very best, not only here in Hong Kong, but hopefully around the world. Um, so the medium of instruction, we teach in English and the whole course is taught in English, but I'm fully aware that many people will be nervous of that and think, well, my English is not that great. Believe me, after four years of working, you will get very, very good at it. Um, also, the methodologies that we teach within the course will help you develop your English proficiency so that you will become extremely good at speaking English, but you should possess English proficiency. Uh, ex excellent qualities in performance capability and uh, high adaptability in learning, living and working in various cultural settings. Let me just kind of expand on each one of those things, if I may. What is performance capability? This is often where that word comes up, talent. What is talent? And it's one that frightens most people. They go, well, I, I'm not sure whether I'm talented enough. Believe me, we are all frightened when we start out on these careers because we don't think we're quite good enough. The most important thing and the thing that I look for on this program is the ability for the individual to enter the imagined world of the character. If you can do that, everything else can be taught. So it's that ability to enter the imagined world. If you've got that, then you can become a screen actor and a stage actor, and who knows, perhaps a world star. But that's the ability that I'm looking for. Now, in terms of high adaptability of living and working, that is a skill that you will all need to succeed in life. You must be adaptable, flexible. You must have the skill to listen, think, and work with others, collaborate. Everything is a collaboration. This presentation is a collaboration between five, six, seven people, lots of other people. It's not just me, lots of other people involved. It's, a, it's a, a, an operation in collaboration. And to succeed in the arts at any level, you have to learn to collaborate. So that is something that I will be looking for when we, we finally meet you at the interview. Um, so let's talk about the admission. You can see up there, we're, we're talking to local students currently. Um, so what do we need from you? Well, first of all, you've got to put us, I think, is it number one on the choice? And what we'll need in your portfolio is a resume. What you've done, it doesn't have to be spectacular. It could be anything. It's just a kind of list of things of what you've done. Do not be worried if you've not done every performance at your school or the drama society or whatever, that is not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is a, a track record of interest in artistic subjects. It might be dance, it might be singing, it might be acting, it might be a range of different things. But what I want to see is whether you're interested in the art, arts. Now we come to the key bit, which are the two speeches that we ask for. Now these are taken from a modern film or television program. 
you choose them and you record them on your phone. Yeah, very simple. I just want to see you living truthfully in the imagined circumstances of the character. So think about what suits your casting, find a speech that suits it, learn it and film it. And if possible, ask a friend, a parent, a relation, somebody to be opposite you, to give you an eye line so that when you're delivering the speech, you're actually looking at someone. It does help you and it will make sure that you can, you can deliver the speech uh, with impact. Then the next thing is your personal statement. Well, that's exactly what it says on the tin. Just a statement by you why you're interested in this program. Don't worry about it. What I like to, to read about is your passions, what you're interested in, what you like. That's all. This isn't magic. There is no magic about this. I just want to know what you're interested in and what you're passionate about. Now, the recommendation letter often worries people because you think that I, I want someone to write, this is the most wonderful actor I've ever worked with and he's brilliant or she is brilliant. No. What I need is a letter from a teacher or someone at a drama society, could even be a relation, someone who knows you, who can verify that you are disciplined, focused and alive to opportunity, because that's what I'm looking for. Just people who are open to the opportunity to grow as an individual and as an artist. So don't worry about the letter of recommendation and, and pressurize your drama teacher into saying, tell them that I'm the very best actor. That is not what I'm looking for. All I need to know is, can you turn up on time, whether you're focused and attentive? That's what I'm looking for. And then the current photograph, this doesn't have to be a sort of studio shot, beautifully lit, because I know that in Hong Kong, people spend quite a lot of time on their photographs. Um, so I doubt that you'll, you'll all have a photo to hand. All I need is one to identify you, because as we go through the process, the many stages, I will meet you at the audition. I'll talk about the auditions in a moment. And then obviously there will be a panel, an international panel of, of experts helping me to make the selection for the programme. So all we need the photograph for is to identify you. And please, please don't be worried or vain. Yeah, I'm not looking for incredibly handsome or beautiful people. I'm looking for people who are interested in the arts and more importantly, in transforming into other people in, in film and television programs. So once I've gone through the portfolios, we then select myself and my associate professor, Annie Chung, who's not here today, but will be at the auditions. We will then select you for the auditions. Now that's a, a very easy process. For the audition, you do one of the speeches that you've already done in your portfolio submission. You've done two, now we just wanna see one. And you bring it to the audition and you perform it for myself and a panel. And then once you've performed it, I will get up and start to work with you. And the reason I want to work with you is to see your flexibility. Two things. Can you listen and can you take direction? Those are the, that's what I'm really looking for. And to encourage you to enter the world of the imagine, imagined character. And once we've done that, we then do the second half of the audition interview, which is the panel interview, which is where the panel will ask you questions about yourself, your interests and why you're interested in acting for global screen. Uh, and it's a very friendly panel of industry professionals made up of uh, directors, producers, uh, actors, associate professors. Uh, and we are there to make sure that we find the very, very best people. Obviously, we're looking for the most talented. But I've been doing this for a long time. And I know that talent, I think Marlon Brando said this, is like diamonds. Sometimes you have to dig very deep and for a long time to find them. So what I need to see is that glimmer, that little flicker, and then I can dig down and get it. Um, 
So that's the structure of the course there, just an overall plan of it. Um, obviously, it's four year, not three. Uh, and your major core courses are all centered around acting. Uh, but there are other fabulous courses uh, which you can you can choose to do. And of course, the general education. Very important that you understand that this is an undergraduate program and not a conservatoire acting program, because I think it's incredibly important that you get a fully rounded undergraduate experience as an actor. You cannot grow as an artist unless you have a fully formed hinterland, whether you understand history, culture, politics. These are not secondary to the artist, they are primary. And it's very important to the actor to be able to understand and to think properly about those things. So I think it's a very, very well thought through course. Uh, now we come to the Q&A bit where you can ask me questions. I think we've got about 15 minutes left. So anything you want to ask, ask away. And before the questions come in, I'll just go through some questions that have previously come up. Uh, which which worry people. Um, one of the questions I get asked most is what type of career can I expect from doing this program? And this is one that mostly I suspect that your parents will ask you rather than, than, than you'll be thinking of at this point. Because you are obviously opening the door to your future and it's got to suit you and it's actually got to work for you, okay? What I say now is very different to what I said 15 years ago, because the world of work has changed and there are major developments happening currently, especially in artificial intelligence. What is basically going to happen is what they call the digital revolution or the fourth industrial revolution is happening as we speak. And as a consequence, lots of jobs which people thought of as safe and absolute are going to disappear, whether they be in accountancy or law. And the world is shifting and changing. So it's really, really important that you understand that the transferable skills from this program will enable you to be a creative problem solver. When the United Nations recently did a survey of all educational establishments around the world, and they asked the principals of all of those educational uh, academies, universities, what was the principal skill that was going to be needed in the latter half of the 21st century? The simple answer came through was problem solving skills. Now, where will you learn how to solve problems? I'll come to that in a second. Um, where you will learn how to problem solve is by making films and being in films, because you're constantly having to think on your feet. You're constantly having to reimagine the world, okay? So this program will teach you those core skills and they'll be useful. So here's a question just coming in. If the level of English is lower than a five, is there an opportunity to have an, uh, an audition? Um, I think that that is, the base minimum level, is it not? So I'm afraid it has to be level five. Any other questions? No? Okay. Um, the internships, which will be in year three, will be mostly organized as we go along. And what we're looking at is we're, we're trying to find film companies, television companies, theater companies that will take our students on board and then make them part of their work process. Obviously, we're in the, the, the new post-COVID world where um, that might be difficult and tricky to set up. So we are building, a, Alongside that, the idea of creating performance-based internships. That is where we create our own production companies that the actors and other people from the academy join to create their own work, whether that be a site-specific piece of theater or a film 
or a, a web series for the internet, whatever it is that you, excites you and you want to create, we can enable. Um, but I really do want to make sure that the internships work because I think the experience of working within the industry really opens up the eye of the student so that they can start to understand not only the world of work, but what is expected of you as you go to work. Um, the exchange opportunities within the course are to those colleges and academies and drama schools around the world that I mentioned, and they'll obviously go along as we do. Okay, yeah. Uh, just going back to your previous question about the level of English, apparently we can accept you a minimum level of three for the audition. So yes, you can apply at level three. Okay. Um, what is the quota? The um, yeah, yeah, I can see it. The um, the quota of students for each cohort is 16. This number was chosen very specifically because it is what I call the perfect number for all the exercises practiced within the classrooms. If it's too much bigger than that, uh, you wait too long to do your bits. And if it's too small, there's not enough of you to have enough variation of people um, to work with. So 16, is the the magic number that we're aiming at the 16 best people uh okay yes currently if you put it as band a you will be chosen to attend the well you will be i will look at your portfolio what happens if they put it into band b i think we got someone online who could answer that question have we not? Manson? No? Yes, uh, I think uh, the program will choose the band A student to submit the portfolio, and after viewing the portfolio, then uh, they will select the uh, outstanding student to the audition and interview. So if you put the program in band B, maybe the chance is slim. Uh, so if you are interested in the program, please put it in band A. Yeah, I have to reinforce that. Uh, the banding, which I'm very new to, obviously being new to Hong Kong, means that we can only look at the band A. So please, please put us in band A for your recommendation. I think it's a fabulous program. So um, I'm just coming to this. Um, yeah, I've just been asked a question about the speech that you use uh, for the audition. If you want to mix speeches from a, the movie, a movie, the same character, I hasten to add, that will work fine. I've seen people use, you know, the beginning of this speech and the end of that speech and blend them together. Just a, a note of caution, make sure that it makes sense, that you don't suddenly have a character doing something at the end, which is totally inappropriate to the start of the speech. So as long as, as you blend the speeches together, it makes sense. Um, artistically and dramatically, then yes, of course. Feel free to shift and shape the material as you will. Again, I'm not looking for you to repeat or copy the performance from the film. Let's say you were doing a speech from um, oh, something I watched last night, City of Angels, and you were going to do the leading character. I don't want you to do it like Andrew Garfield. I want you to do it like you would do it. So when you look at the speech, make it yours. That's the important thing about this. Make the speech yours, yeah? Uh, however you want to put it together, that will work for you. Um, ah. This is, yeah, we do encourage you obviously to go to the theater, watch films. Um, I, I do think that we, occasionally provide tickets to go to things as much as possible 
there isn't a huge subsidy, but where we can, we will try to get there. Um, in terms of what you watch, you'll be watching quite a lot of material that is, which is free to air, whether that's coming through the, the normal distributors or YouTube or, or, or whatever it is. Also, you will be creating an immense amount of work, whether that film work or stage work. Uh, and obviously that will inform you as artists as you, as you go through. Um, I'm afraid the letter of recommendation is a requisite of the course. If you are struggling to find someone, um, ask a former teacher, someone that you've worked with. It might be, you might do a, a part-time job somewhere. You could ask anyone to write you a letter of recommendation. Remember, what I'm looking for is not someone to say, I think this person is a wonderful or marvelous actor. What I'm looking for is someone to say, that Jane turns up on time, that she's easy to work with, and she's likable. That's, that's really what I'm looking for, okay? So don't get worried about the letter of recommendation. It's merely someone informing me and the rest of the panelists what you're like as a person. So as long as you can find someone who knows you as a person, it's probably best not to find a relative um, but if you could find someone outside the family, that would be best. Um, I think we... Uh, I don't know what that means. Would you please introduce about the Honours Project? Oh, the Honours Project at the end. The Honours Project at the end will be yours to choose. But there will be a sort of range of things that we can do. One of the things that I'm really keen on doing is creating what I call show real material. That is where we create small scenes that you will act in, which will be shot as professionally as we can and directed as professionally as we can so that you can create show reels. One of the things we've already created on the course is a web page for the actors so that the directors and producers within the Academy of Film can automatically see the actors in acting for global screen and choose them for their projects. So again, you'll be doing lots and lots of work as you move through the university and you, you move through the four year cycle. But for that final honors project, that will either be a film or a stage play of your choice and you will work as a cohort and a company to produce that work. Um, but I'm very, very keen on creating some form of showreel film to attract agents, producers and directors, because it's so important that they get to see you at that stage so that the agents can sign you up and the directors can use you in their film and television programs and the producers can see the stars of the future. Any other questions? Is that it? I think. I think we're done, aren't we? Oh, no, I've got another question here. Um, no, I've got it. I think that's it. Sorry? Yeah, eight, minutes. eight minutes. Okay. Um, is there any other questions, please ask? Um, I'll just sort of go back in my mind's eye to things that other people have asked me in the past. Um, and that is, what will you principally learn when you're on the course. Um, and what you'll principally learn is the methodology of acting, how to extend and expand your imagination, which is a tremendous transferable skill to have. If you think about what the future of work is going to be like, having a good imagination is gonna be pretty much core to what you're going to need in virtually every walk of life. So having had your imaginations developed, focused, and being given the concentration to focus it will enable you in whatever job or profession that you move off into. That's very important. Just got some, what's this for? Oh, this one at the bottom. Um, so some questions here. I don't have any experience of acting. Will I have a chance? Yes, very much so. Um, when I auditioned for drama school, I'd been a child actor. But when I was at drama school, I was there with lots of people who had never even been in a play. 
nothing. Because as I learned when I was a Rada, is what we're looking for is the ability to enter the imagined world of the character. That's what you've really got to be able to do. And if you can do that, everything else will follow. So don't think for a second, because you haven't done a play at school, or you haven't done a play with the drama club, or you haven't done this, that it will affect your chances of finding a place on this exciting program. It won't. Yeah, what I'm looking for is that ability. Everything else can be taught and you can develop. I don't know the answer to that. Um, can Mason answer that one? Okay, let me answer the question. Uh, yeah. The question is about uh, if I put this program in Ben A after the release of DSE result, yeah. do I have the opportunity, opportunity to hand in my portfolio? Um, I'm afraid not because uh, most of the lesson exercise is done in June, that is next year month. So uh, I recommend you to put this program as plan A before the deadline of uh, end of May. Otherwise, you will not be chosen to be attend the interview or audition in June. Right. Thank you for that. Um, yeah. So it's really important that today you put us in band A. That's what's clearly coming through here, that, um, that you put us in band A. Um, what is a suitable audition speech? This is something I get asked a lot. Uh, something that lasts around about two to three minutes, not too long, and something where the character changes. Yeah, I call it the moment of change. It's really important that something happens. For instance, you can have lots of characters talking. They talk a lot. But is anything happening? That's the, that's the key thing. You need to look for a speech where something is changing for the character and where there is a moment of change within the character. I hope that makes sense because it's um, quite difficult to find. But as much as possible, enjoy the search for the speeches. That's the key. You, you're going to be looking at film and television programmes and you could look at it and you could think, I could play that character, I could be her, I could be him, I'd like to do that. And then write it down, learn it, and apply your imagination. Think, where has the character been? What does the character want? And how is it they're going to get it? Those three questions are the most basic in acting. And that is fundamentally what every professional actor asks of any text, of anything. Where am I? What do I want? And how am I going to get it? Okay, there's one minute left for any more questions. This is your last chance. They're being very strict with us today. So there's a, we'll literally get a black screen after this or you go to someone else. So, nope, there's nothing there. So I'll ask one of these. Um, what language should we use for the interview and audition? Uh, that should be in English, please. Yep, it's the same question again, isn't it? Yeah, it's basically, we seem to be getting the same question. Let me make this very clear. You have to put us in band A for your portfolio to be looked at. So it's really important that you put us as band A as, as your first choice so that we can select you. Okay, I think we are coming to the end of our time. It's been lovely to meet you all. These are strange. I much prefer doing live events where I can see the color of your eyes. It's been great. I hope to see your portfolios and I look forward after that to seeing you at the auditions. And then after that, joining the program where we can have fun together. It'll be great. Thank you for your time today and good luck. I'll see you in your portfolios. Bye.